as your bank put limits on how much money you can deposit onto exchanges to buy crypto, screw them. Swissbog's got your back. They've created personalized IBAN numbers, so you can send as much money as you like to buy crypto. Swissbog. Hello everybody, welcome back. Might as well make a video on Jasmine. It seems to be what people like to watch on this channel at the moment. And I remember back in the olden days when I used to make videos on Matic when it was, you know, several cents, if that. Um, yeah, my, my channel became the Matic channel and we all sort of benefited from that in the end, didn't we? Um, so, yeah, let's let's do a bit of Jasmine again. So first of all, we'll do what we normally do. What we always have to do is look at the dominoes in front of Jasmine, which starts with traditional markets. We all know that. It's boring. And if you want to join the uh, Patreon, uh, we're doing a live stream tonight, as we do every Tuesday and Friday. It's £7.50 a month. Two live streams a week. Can't complain with that. And um, Right, so what we're looking at here is the S&P. It's S&P Futures, obviously, it's not open quite yet. The S&P Futures shows a bullish chart, technically still bullish chart and we're above the Bollinger Band Center 10 21 50 200 which are all golden crossed and as far as the itchy cloud is concerned we're about to make a negative cross so even though this would be a potential area for a bounce potential area for a bounce right now 65 percent more likely to bounce at this level right now and i'm not really feeling it that, that it's actually going to bounce from the bollinger band there is a chance that we come further down towards the 200 exponential again and uh, given the way that the euro looks which i'll show you shortly makes me feel a little bit more skeptical about any kind of bounce at the upper zones uh, the four hourly here and again yeah, it's not not very convincing uh, we're above all major moving averages, which is nice. It's definitely nice, I have to say. Um, but no itchy cloud pump signals, nothing like that. No trend signals or anything like that. We're just sort of trending and actually we're sort of dwindling. Volume across the board is dwindling. Uh, and let's face it, uh, let's stand back and just have a little think about what's been going on on the S&P, Euro and Bitcoin and everything else, right? Um, we, um, we, the, I mean, I might as well get the S&P, the real S&P up because uh, that's where the TA exists. We've come up towards the, and, and, and touched the resistance once again, right? Two weeks in a row. Okay, this is still a bullish chart. And I said that this is likely to be the low for the S&P, although we might double bottom at some point this year. But this is likely to be the low. It looks like it is the low. Crept out of a giant descending triangle, crept out of a falling wedge, crept out of many things and have actually remained bullish for, for quite a while now. But, you know, coming back down towards the 4,000s, uh, 4,030, 4,040, uh, seems to be appropriate for not just the, uh, the, the weekly, but also the daily. Uh, and that is not an enormous drop. And even a double bottom is not an enormous drop. We're talking about a drop of maybe about 2.5% and a double bottom somewhere along the lines of around 13, 14% from today's price action so it's not the end of the world this is a slow burn remember this isn't the market that it you know that, that that we have been so accustomed to for the majority of our lives really the up only chart however it will become that once again at some stage and um, these markets are unlikely in my opinion unlikely to completely crash and uh, explode and, and and just fall into their own shadows it's not likely to happen unless a new black swan turns up. All this CPI, FOMC, all this blah, 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 not enough to break these charts. And every time you see a bank sort of appear to collapse or fall or the stock prices fall, it adds more incentive for the Fed to pause and maybe even lower rates. They're not going to let that stuff happen again. Not now. Not with all the geopolitical problems that are going on. We're not, they're not going to allow that to happen. And if that does happen, we've got worse problems on our hands than lower prices. <laughs> All right. Um, and it's not likely to happen, right? It's just, it's just not likely to, to happen. Um, although, yeah, double bottom at some point, you know, this year, maybe into next year is, is not unlikely. But it doesn't look like it wants to happen right now. So around just above the $4,000 zone seems appropriate. Now, this is where things start to get a little, mm, uh, a little different. And I promise you, we will move on to Jasmine. The euro breaking down below its Bollinger Band now, heading back down towards its uh, horizontal support of significance. And we did that the other day and shot back up, uh, but we're finding new resistance around 110, uh, 110.09. So there is a fair bit of reason to believe that maybe we're curling over now and uh, we are looking to maybe, maybe not start a downtrend, but actually test lower. So maybe just consolidate. Remember, 
Golden Cross was retest. We bounced from here. We were bullish on the euro from way back. You know, way back in December, we were bullish on this. And then when we got bullish on it, we said, wait for a bigger pullback. We'll move into this. And we got that. We moved back up and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not saying that I'm right every time, but I was right on this one. And what we're seeing, though, uh, is a subtle change of behavior on this daily, which could uh, end up being more of a consolidation. So if that is the case, and the four hourly suggests that, yeah, we should find a bounce around the 109.3, 109.4 bounce city fm it might only just be a bounce and it might not uh, take us to to new local highs immediately so just be aware i mean this is certainly uh, this 109.4 this is definitely a uh, an area for a position in the euro euro dollar um but it's not like the best thing you've ever seen but there, there's a fair bit of support here so we might be looking for a bounce here which also could help us with the s p now let's quickly look at bitcoin and then we'll go to jasmine Bitcoin also yesterday hit that area uh, all the way down here at uh, 27,200. Basically the horizontal that we've had that was just below the 50 exponential. So now recognize that we're below all major moving averages outside of the 200 exponential on the daily below this 50 exponential. And also this bounce was relatively anemic, wasn't very convincing on the daily. So it actually does look a little bit tired at this point right now. Now, uh, you know, the 27,200 or 22, 250 or whatever, Whatever. it is still relevant and we could still bounce from there and um, we have not had a bullish divergence on the rsi we we didn't even have yeah we did have it on the money flow index on the four hour it's nothing really the volume is still pretty measly in comparison to what it has been for a while so let's check the three day the three day also we're looking like it wants to close below this Bollinger Band Center, offering further downside that could take us back down to 25 to 24. So this has been highlighted on the chart for a little while. And we should entertain that as a realistic possibility, to be honest with you, at this stage. Um, although being above this exact zone where we are right now, we'll just zoom right in uh, to price action. You know, we've got, uh, what, a, what, what, a, what is it that we're looking at here? A 200 exponential on a three day. That's okay. Uh, a 21 exponential on a three day. That's okay. But closures below 27,250. Again, we've got horizontals. We've got major moving averages on higher term time frames. Uh, I would be focused towards 25,000 and maybe a little lower. It doesn't happen overnight, but it, it does point to that direction. Right, so the chart we've all been waiting for. The, the reason we clicked. It's the Jasmine chart. Right, so let's have a look. So Jasmine has actually uh, performed more or less actually actually as expected uh although it's done it in a rapid um uh, rapid space of time right so we highlighted this area up here 20 uh, what are we talking about <laughs> 0.8 of a cent right i said look this uptrend is likely to if we if we do break above the 200 exponential move towards 0.8 of a cent now we were ever so slightly front run from that okay ever so slightly front run um literally by a fraction of a cent um and the general direction still points to the up, right? So we've got high, low, higher high, higher low at the moment. Higher lows, you know, will be, well, wrecked city below 0.6 of a cent. And um, now you can see the squiggly lines I've got here, whether this is from one of my Jasmine videos or maybe from the, the live stream. This is what I, I, I'm expecting to see from Jasmine if it can perform, if it can continue to perform, which is to move up to here down to this level this level is not just a random line this was a projection of where the uh, the bollinger band center is going to be meandering uh, so that we hit the resistance way before and we're coming down to support way before so big move up big move down and and, and then i would i would basically be expecting to revisit the 0.8 of a cent to see if that breaks at that stage now uh we are below the 200 below the 10 and we have supports you'd like to believe them to be supports to be honest with you um around 0.65 of a cent but back testing this really on the bollinger band on the daily it does have some relevance it definitely does have some relevance we had this uptrend here we came down to test it and that's where we had this last shoot up towards the 200 exponential and then we also remained above it for the most part and then when we closed below it, things got nasty again. So we are above it right now. So we should think of this rough area as a rough area of support, a rough area of support. Is Jasmine going to be able to move in the face of a downtrend in Bitcoin, downtrend in S&P, downtrend in Euro, 
probably that's an unlikely scenario to be honest it's probably uh, you know unlikely that it's able to do that um but a static or um uptrending market which we can all hope for but uh, and like i say we're looking for bounces just in the short term just small measly bounces we've discussed that on the s&p and especially the euro and bitcoin as well so we're looking for a little bounce around these levels maybe not to generate a new high it's what I would call squeaky bum time at the moment and probably time to think about maybe not trading uh, and just to see if we are at a turning point and a downtrending market rather than you know continuing to pump up which we honestly still can you know at the moment I wouldn't say it's 50 50 I'd say that the shorter term time frames versus the higher term time frames are so conflicting that that it's that there's the risk to reward it is not is not good on either direction right now we want to kind of try and sort of make sure that we focus on a trending market and not one that looks like it could be rolling over for instance or or, or getting ready for a, a, another bounce but based on the jasmine chart this was the expectation of the jasmine chart and and so maybe we should focus on it uh, and give it you know the benefit of the doubt but there is a lot of risk involved when you think about the dominoes that lead us before this one individual chart which we want to be able to trade and if the trade was made uh, in you know a healthy green market i would expect this to play out exactly as you see on the chart you know obviously you know the timing of here is just is not relevant it's the move that's relevant so we came up here we come back down touch a, a bollinger band center move back up and see if we get rejected or break again Let's have a look at momentum. So momentum uh, is bearish divergence on the money flow index, bearish divergence on the RSI, and making a cross, although it's above the zero point, quite high above the zero point, making a negative cross. So the daily does look like it wants to, or is continuing to go down. Now, if we think about what we see on the four hourly, we are crossing below the zero point with a support sitting around six point point six four of a cent so there is support around point six four of a cent on the four hourly which is your 200 exponential which should just just be another retest of a golden cross and that would be i suppose a, an appropriate opportunity to try a jasmine position uh if you have the balls to trade a market which could potentially be further downside you know with further downside so i'm not i'm not trying to sell jasmine i don't have a stake in jasmine there's no reason for me to to try and shill jasmine to you is i'm not one of those it's that's not the point it's just an update on the on on the chart itself because last week it ended up being the best performing altcoin of 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 uh, of, well, of, of my recent buys my my trades or whatever so i might as well update it uh, and I'll let you know what i'm thinking about it but yeah we're thinking about these areas 0.6 of a cent 0.64 of a cent which again if we go to the the the, the daily We've got 0.65 of a cent and the 50 exponential is 0.62 of a cent. So there's a fair bit of support around these zones. But yeah, it, can it do it? Can it do it in the face of a Bitcoin that wants to come down further? I don't know. I really don't know. So I'm just going to leave it with you to decide if it's something that you want to either get in or you know, potentially get out, depending on where you entered the trade. Or if you're happy to hold this for the duration of a bull market, which is very much, in my opinion, uh, in its humble beginnings. And just to, uh, yeah, as a side note, for those on the Patreon, I talk about this all the time. I just want to show you something about bull markets, right? So I, I <clears throat> the beginning of the previous bull market, um, uh, when it came to buying and, and holding, right? So just hodl, hodls. I bought Bitcoin below 4,000, just, just short below 4,000, just a little lower. And I bought Ethereum around $160, right? So around these levels, I bought it because it looks like bull market was 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 materializing. And I was like, let's, let's do it. Let's go. So what I saw with my Ethereum was an entry point of around $160. I remember it clearly. So I bought you know, quite a lot of Ethereum, obviously, for that price. Uh, and I saw it go up to 128%. Yeah. Then I saw it go down. Remember, this is hodling, right? This is a hodl coin. I saw it go down. No, 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 I'm down, I'm down, I'm down 26%. Ugh. Oh, yes, I'm up, I'm up, baby, I'm up. Way 75%. Oh, no, I'm down 44%. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm up, I'm up, yay, I'm up, I'm up again, I'm 50%. Oh, oh it's going down. And then suddenly, 
Ethereum became the next best thing to slice bread. And before you know it, it went all the way up. And there's actually, you know, I still own that Ethereum. Yeah, I'd still own all that Ethereum that I bought back then as a hodl position. Yeah, yeah, I had no, no real reason to sell it, especially when, you know, obviously it's still a 10x at this point now and i expect it to do quite a bit more over the next few years decent investment definitely a decent investment um well, i just wanted to put it to you that actually for the most part this was supposed to be a bull market it wasn't supposed to be it is a bull market right but i don't really see any significant uh, long-lasting gains for what is this 18 months 18 months or so you know i, I wasn't even comfortably uh, happy um with what i'd got for the best part of two years right that is ethereum and now look at ethereum I'm not saying that yeah look at the price i'm talking about the time and, and what it takes to uh, sustain a, 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 you know your patience and uh, through a through a bull market right you can trade bull markets and bull markets especially in crypto uh testing to say the least they're full of opportunity you get pumps and rips on coins all over the place but the general interest is not there for people to buy and continue to buy and then the retailers to buy and then the institutions to buy and then the mania to kick off and everything to stay high for a prolonged period of time that's not where we are right now most people are like super skeptical of this market as they were back here they were definitely skeptical of it back here. You you tell people you trade crypto, it was exactly the same way as it, it is right now. Are oh, you buying crypto? Oh, but crypto's dead, man. Crypto's dead. Oh, it's a, I think it's over, man. This crypto's over, man. No, 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 no. Crypto's not over. Crypto's bigger now than it was previous bull market. There's more uh, people buying it than there was the last bull market. Yeah, there's 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 more utility than there was in the last bull market. It just, the list goes on. It's not dead. It's grown. It's bigger than it was before. However, the sentiment is the same as it was in the previous bull market at the beginnings, the humble beginnings, which was, uh, what, what do you call it? The disbelief phase of the overall uh, Wall Street cheat sheet. That's what it is. Ah, oh, no, nah, it's, it's not. No, nah, it's, it's just, no, nah, it's nothing. Is it? And it's, I suppose it's the same with traditional markets. People are looking at that and going, no, 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 it's just not going to work out. Listen, uh, if you want to buy and hold altcoins right obviously you want to be buying and holding things that have a decent degree of success over time jasmine i don't know a great deal about jasmine but just looking at the overall chart generally speaking it's not a chart that i would be generally super excited to buy and hold large amounts of however you know there is a chance that it could work out obviously treat it like a lottery ticket but the one thing i do like about jasmine that other charts don't seem to uh that, that don't seem to have is that it does respond quite well to signals because we, we've traded some of these signals in the past quite significant uh, signals and, and and done pretty well out of it in the bear market uh, to be honest uh, and uh, and that works nicely recently it proved to be pretty good as well so there is a tradable chart here whether it's a, a buy and hold type chart or you're looking to just trade it i just want to put it out to you that yeah bull markets can be slow um, and they don't feel like bull markets, especially when you're buying and, uh, and trading or holding altcoins. But the proof will be will be in the end, and the de and the destination is 2025. And 2025 is where everybody you know, who thinks to be buying, you know, and accumulating it down at these lower levels. Maybe not like today. I'm just saying dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and altcoins at these levels. By 2025, you look back and go, oh yeah, it was just like what. Um, CC was saying about buying Ethereum. He bought Ethereum at 160. It went up. It went down. It went up. It went down. It took two years for it even to be comfortably up uh, and to never look back again. Two years can feel like a long time, especially when you're down sometimes at some stages, like 50%. Um, I did the same thing with XRP in, in the bull market prior to that. I bought a sizable chunk of XRP at three cents. Which at the time when I bought that was close to a peak, uh, like a like a peak in its own price. It was up, it was down, it was down for the majority of the time. And then one day, I say one day, but over a, quite a, quite a substantial period of time, it went up. It went up a hundred x. But throughout that period, it was it was a very testing time. Same thing applies here as it did to ethereum to me in, in 2019 and xrp in 2015 or 16 wherever it was that i bought it going back a long time now so oh, bloody hell it's almost 10 years can you imagine that anyway 
just wanted to put it to you. Uh, right, I'll leave it with you there. I hope you have a good day. If you want to join the Patreon, like I say, links in the description below. Other than that, take it easy.